I am moving to Europe. Well, we are. And in fact, I'm already here in the Czech Republic. Uh, I've actually already been to England a little bit already. Uh, I'm currently traveling with my family. But come January, I'm gonna be living here for two years with my wife, Laura. I'm gonna be working here. I'm gonna be doing everything I normally would, but here, and I'm pretty damn excited. And now I'm here in Vienna, Austria. Will I still be making videos? Yes, absolutely. And I want to incorporate more of the real world into them. You know, ruins, history, tell stories about the places I'm in. Go to places, be places, make it part of it. I want to really kind of lean into this. Am I coming to your country? Well, I know I'm going to all of these countries. Some for only a week, some for months to live at a time. But you're gonna have to follow me on Instagram, Twitter to kind of be up to date with where I am at any given time. Will there be meetups? Well, maybe. I don't know the logistics of that, the security and stuff. But if you see me on the street, feel free to come up and say hi. A couple of people have already done that. It's really exciting for me. I'd love to meet you. And I will definitely be at May Comic Con uh, this year in London. And now I'm in Budapest, Hungary. That's the Hungarian parliament behind me, or what's left of it. But I am going to ask you to follow me over on Instagram. There's a, a QR code you can scan on the screen, or it's uh, at the link down in the description, the pinned comment below. I post there way more, and I'm going to be able to talk just about daily life, thoughts, the food, the travels, just a lot more there. If you want to stay up to date, uh, thank you to everyone who does. But I want to ask you to comment down below, what's a food I need to try? try in your country? What is a thing I need to see? Let me know because I firmly believe that trusting locals is just a way better way to see a country than TripAdvisor or whatever. You get to see things that just others would not even think about. Uh, so please do let me know. I'm also going to be doing a lot more kind of TikTok and short little history and culture tidbits uh, because I can now and it's exciting. So if you want to follow me there as well. You know, and as we head into this crazy new year, I'm stoked to say that the calendars for the year of the future you are here at last. They're available at the Nebula store down in the link in the description below. These calendars feature the gorgeous art from a huge array of artists from my book, A Catalogue for the End of Humanity, including quotes from the stories. And as we go through each month of the year, we're gonna take a look at each of the stories in the book, kind of study them, and you can mark that in your calendar. But more than that, any profit I make from any of these calendars is going to be donated to charity, Doctors Without Borders specifically. All the art, like this gorgeous piece for the life and death of Lucia's library, are done by real human artists, no AI involved, and there are only 100 calendars being produced. So I know people say like limited stock, but yeah, no, there's limited stock with this. The link to the calendar is down below. Go get one to help you figure out your writing, your year, your year of future you, right? I've had a lot of people asking me like, why? Why move to Europe? Why two years? It's important to know that like New Zealand is in the middle of nowhere. Like it's not just in the middle of nowhere, it's in the middle of the middle of nowhere. And that makes it really expensive to go and see any of the rest of the world, you know? So uh, people in New Zealand tend to go and do an OE, an overseas experience or an uh, overseas education, where they often go to Europe or America and they go and see a whole lot of countries all at once for a longer time. And then yeah, I'm going to be going back to New Zealand. So far I have loved public transportation, like having just trains and buses that, like work and are convenient, it's amazing. New Zealand does not have it and I'm, I, I love it so much, the infrastructure. Yes, the food is incredible, but I did not expect so many like hot dogs and sausages. I mean, of course I should have, but I didn't. And if you've got questions of your own, please also leave them down in the comments below. I will try to answer them, I'm excited for this. Some people ask about the, like, the logistics of moving. You know, it is all the way across the globe. Like if you drill a hole through New Zealand to the other side, you get to 20 kilometers outside Madrid or something. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's not easy. It is expensive. I'm pretty nervous about like the prices of rent in a lot of these places. Uh, but, um, but also I'm going to be working with a lot less equipment than I normally would. So I'm pretty nervous about that, but I'm going to have to figure it out and I will figure it out. And who knows what it's going to be like. Uh, people have also asked what I'm going to miss the most about New Zealand. Now I've only been here for kind of a few weeks at the moment, but I think the thing I'm going to miss the most, you know, aside some friends and family, is space. New Zealand is, is quite a spacious country. Everything in Europe is just a little smaller, a little bit more cramped, and I'm not used to it. It's a little bit more claustrophobic, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to adjust to that very well. We shall see. I mean, I guess I'll have to adjust to it, right? And beyond kind of open space, 
I'll miss silence. I will miss quiet. Europe is 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 quite a loud place. There there are always sirens and ambulances, and you can always hear them. You know. I am looking forward to when we go to Sweden and we just find like a place in the middle of nowhere next to a lake with a forest. It's a dream come true and I'll be able to write. I hope. Maybe. We'll see. And by the way, if it's not on that list of countries, I still want you to give us recommendations because places like Ireland and Lithuania, they're all maybes. We're all going to be maybe going there at some point. We don't entirely know. However, you might be wondering, where is the charity live stream? For the past uh, kind of several years, I've done a 24 hour charity live stream raising money uh, for, a, for a cool cause. And I just haven't been able to do it this year. Uh, between releasing a catalog for the end of humanity, on writing world building volume three, uh, getting videos done so I'm here and moving my entire life to the other side of the planet, I have not been able to uh, get that together, which, you know, sucks, but I still want to do something. So I've created a charity drive for Doctors Without Borders, and you can see that just down below the video, down at the link where you can join me in donating. Between Ukraine and Palestine, millions of people across the world are without health or health care, and Doctors Without Borders is one of the most reputable organizations in the world. They are going to these places to help people who really need it. It feels like the world is increasingly unstable, increasingly more violent. We talk a lot about Ukraine and Palestine, but it's also Yemen and Myanmar and South Sudan. And these are the people on the front lines doing something about it. It's, it's why I very much am happy to support them. They're an incredibly transparent and open charity with 98% on Charity Navigator, so we know that we can trust them and that the money is going to the right places. And as much as I really wish I could do the whole 24 hour charity live stream thing, I, I can't. I'm sorry, I, I just can't this year. But uh, you guys have been incredibly good to me with book sales, the book launches, it's been amazing. And so I don't just want it to be about, you know, I'm, I'm making money off that and there's no charity thing this year. So I'm going to be donating. Uh, $2,000 of the money that has come from those books to this charity drive for Doctors Without Borders. If you understand if you're not in a position to join me in any way, that's okay. It's been a rough year. And I said before, any profit made from the calendars is going to be going straight to Doctors Without Borders on top of my donation. And that's because I don't want to make a video where I'm like giving you mixed messagings to buy stuff from me but also donate. So any money that I make from the calendars I talked about in this video, that's going straight to Doctors Without Borders too, alright? It's all going to be part of it. So yeah, if you want to donate, that's amazing. Just giving that, that's brilliant. But if you also want a calendar on top of that, you know, that's also cool too because any money is going to be going to them as well. It's kind of, you know, it's a donation in its own right. So thank you, especially those who donate. I hope to see you around uh, in Europe. If you see me, come say hi, let me know your recommendations and uh, share the charity drive so that we can raise more money and do more good. You know, that's why we're here, right? We're here on this earth to do more good, hopefully. But stay nerdy, I might be back with an extraordinarily long video, and I'll see you in the future, in Europe. <laughs>